Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome into the studio today. We are going to talk about hinge cutting. Um, it doesn't take you very long on social media when you're dealing with or looking for tips on habitat improvements for whitetail and not only whitetail, uh, but all wildlife. But it doesn't take you very long, right? Uh, when you're surfing around looking for that information to find information about hinge cutting that is attached to that. That is great. It does work. I'm not one of the guys that's going to tell you to not hinge cut at all. But over the years, I have learned um, a few very important pieces that have got me into trouble years ago. It's kind of that school of hard knocks, right? So we're going to talk about hinge cutting today, guys. Uh, the top three hinge cutting fails. Um, safe, first and foremost, we didn't label that on here, but first and foremost, the first safety or the first topic that we should talk about is safety, right? Hinge cutting is a great tool, but hinge cutting sadly sometimes leads into missed deer seasons. And why is that? The reason for that is, is if you don't have the experience with a chainsaw, err on the side of caution. Hinge cutting is not uh, anything to mess around with. I, I find each and every year that folks try to tackle too large of trees um, you know, a six or eight inch tree, 10 inch tree, 12 inch tree, um, it are your targeted size when you're hinge cutting, right? When you're making these bedding areas and habitat pockets and stuff, when you're tackling those big trees, um, things can go south in a hurry. So I highly recommend, uh, either having someone that has saw knowledge, cutting those big trees down to release that canopy first and foremost, before we even get to this point, like we talk, right? Um, the second thing is, uh, so do that with someone that's experienced and or go in and just do yourself a favor, leave the tree there, but hack and squirt it and kill it in place. The, the piece of that is, is we want to make sure that we're, we're uh, using the correct habit or the uh, correct herbicide for that application. The, the one that I have found, um, and I share that with my clients through my Habitat book, um, and here on the channel we talk about it, is the Craig Harper cocktail. So, uh, Doc Craig Harper, um, he's actually worked with um, many, many people around the country. He's, he's got that uh, forestry background, and they have found a cocktail, Craig Harper's cocktail, right, that kills pretty much all species. A lot of stuff out there is going to kill one and not the other. That seems to to really kind of you know nothing walks away from it. So make sure safety when you're if you're if you're going to do that with the with the uh, herbicide, make sure you've got protective gear on, headgear, hand gear, go the extra mile. That stuff is nothing to mess with. But it's an easier and more safer proje project instead of trying to hinge cut too large trees. If you're not familiar with the term barber chair, um, you will be when you start hinge cutting. Use caution. The hinge cutting is all great and all of this stuff might work, but it doesn't going to do you a bit of good if you can't experience it this fall. Safety first. So before we even start the video, make sure that's a key piece of the puzzle. So those large trees, you know, like we said, hack and squirt them, have somebody else have you take them out, have the logger take them out. I'm not a big fan of just killing a bunch of trees in a bedding area if there's log value to it. But the sad reality is if you're on a property that isn't ready for logging, your logger's not going to come in for a dozen trees. You know, So what do you do? Do you wait five years or do you get rid of those big trees? Um, a lot of times it's best to cut them if you got cut them down, if you've got a way um, to use them for firewood or got a, a, a way to get them out so folks can use them for firewood. Uh, that's the best, you know, I'm not just a fan of going in and killing a bunch of trees for no reason, but every situation, every property is different, right? So if you do get into those situations, make sure two things before we even start this safety first, and you have to release the canopy. If you don't release the canopy before you even worry about the, uh, trying to complete hinge cutting or bedding area projects, your hinges are going to die. Your sunlight is not going to get to them and they're going to die. The next thing that's going to follow that is you're going to realize a year from now that they're dead 
or they're not growing. So you're going to try to cut the trees, bigger trees down to release the canopy and you're going to crush them anyway. So I teach that all the time. You've heard that time and time again here on the channel. Make sure you release that big canopy first. So when we're talking about the hinge cutting process itself, three big things that jump out to me that I see time and time again that are, and I'm just as guilty of as anyone, uh, you know, fails, right? Hinge cutting fails. So the number one thing, guys, that we want to stress and we want to really work on here, the, the really, uh, you know, have a lot of folks start really, really, really connecting is the access. Don't hinge cut on your access. The term edge feathering right now out there in the world is getting a lot of folks in trouble because edge feathering is great if it's used in the right spot. Edge feathering usually can be connected to hinge cutting. So uh, if you have popple or that you're taking out along a food plot, you're trying to let daylight in from that southern exposure, a lot of times edge feathering is just kill cutting, right? But all species specific. But if you're hinging that stuff and you can hinge it a little bit higher and you can get the top of Osage orange and stuff like that to go down, you're making a visual screen, right? A more natural looking visual screen to make soft edges. That is not what you want to do on your access. Anytime that you bring a tree through hinge cutting, you bring the top of the tree down, um, whether that's low, low hinge or, you know, a risky high hinge. Anytime you bring that foliage down to the ground, you're creating food. You create food, create side cover, you're going to create bedding. So this example number one here, guys, is near bedding. Hinging is a big X, right? Don't hinge on your excess. If you're going to hinge them and you have to do that for kind of a blockade, right, or blockage, Make sure that you return to these areas and you have you take the uh, herbicide and you spray that herbicide on those stumps so you kill the tree. Part of that is though a hinge, hence the reason we use it, right? A hinge is very attractive for a deer to bed next to because it has that inviting top, it's got side cover, it's the hinge is sometimes just at their face level when they're coming into it. Hinge cutting is very inviting, right? Done right, if it's not done too much. So if you place that stuff on your access, you are inviting potential bedding to that. So these red lines are what a lot of folks will go through and hinge you know, away and kind of do that edge feathering and block that off. So you can, the blue line, the X's, the black X's are the, the stand locations, right? Just as a representation. And that hinge cutting is done along there to block that, the deer from wanting to get down through there and also the thought process is um, so you can use that screening right that edge feathering or that uh, natural screening not something that you want to do guys I, I fix a lot of those every year uh, I walk onto a lot of properties where I recommend the clients fix them every year so the way to cure that is if you go are going to hinge or have to hinge feel that like you need to hinge to make a better blockade Make sure that you're running these parallel, not perpendicular, but you're running in parallel to your access. Deer do not like to be cattle shot or in a cattle shoot, right? Um, do not put them perpendicular, put them parallel. It creates a tunnel. Deer do not like the smaller the tunnel, the worse, right? So if you're putting these on that uh, core side, you're going in here and you're putting these um, uh, trees parallel, you create all of a sudden you start creating this cattle shoot effect, right? Um, make sure that, you know, if there's holes in there that they're getting through, you can lay another one in. If you're going to hinge it, make sure you go back through and you spray the stumps so they're dead. Problem with it is it's still very attractive. So make sure that you err on the side of caution there. I'd rather see you kill cut them uh, than hinge them. Biggest thing is, guys, parallel to your excess. And parallel into your your uh, your stands, um, so that's the way to do that. No hinges on the outside at all. If you're going to hinge and you feel like you need that visual block, make sure you spray them. Uh, number two, um, large core areas uh, that are, are hinge cut. 
Uh, sadly, this one is what I refer to as that pizza pie effect, guys. Um, it would shock you how much of that I see each and every year throughout the country. And per the way I design and per the way my brain works, I, I just don't promote that. Um, there's a lot of folks out there that will, you know, disagree with that. Um, if you're going to do internal bedding that has to be connected back out to a stand location or there has to be a rhyme or reason, right? It has to lead to something. But ever so often, not every so often, but so often, I see this happening time and time again, right? As folks are going in and maybe find the right species, maybe find an area that they don't have to worry about cutting the big trees out of. Maybe there's a bunch of six or eight, 10 inch maple or oak in there. And uh, man, it's in the center of the property and we're gonna make a bedding area and uh, it's gonna be so inviting. And that's the problem. <laughs> It may be, you may hit it right on the head with the, with the in invitation to deer. But if that's the only spot, if that's the closest spot, let's say that's better habitat, better security cover to a food source, what's gonna happen is your does are gonna transfer all the way from that food source, that food plot, all the way back in to that area. Now you've got the does saturating the core and or areas you don't want them in. You're taking the invitation to the bucks that could potentially be there and you're throwing it out, right? So uh, I, would, I would take that and I would really err on the side of caution with that one, guys. Make a hinge cutting area make sense. If it's in the core, the red would be the pizza pie, right? It's non-huntable. In order to hunt downwind side of that, in order to, to hunt the steering of the deer, Hence the reason I'm so adamant on my transitions. Um, you would have to go in there internal of the property to hunt that area. One is bad. Five is worse because now you're giving them five places to scent check um, instead of the one that makes sense. So they are there when you are there, right? Bring that stuff to the outside. There's a reason for these guys, but it's not your first initial goal, right? Bring that stuff to the outside. So the green would be a habitat pockets on a line of travel so you can hunt that when the wind's right for you it's right for him and also put these larger uh, areas hinge cut areas put those large inviting more social areas out towards your food sources so you take care of the does you got three or four of those food plots around a 40 or an 80 160 whatever that you own all of a sudden you suck that drama to the outside side and it make it inviting in larger groups cloning your food plots right then you have a potential to go in there to to create some internal bedding but if this isn't done first this is this is going to get overtaken and that the rest of it's all for none because it interrupts the flow our channel is brought to you in part by these great partners painted arrow outdoors race proven performance and c6 land clearing harrodsburg kentucky Drone Deer Recovery and Pruitt Productions. Cutty Back. Bass Pro and Cabela's. Ace Hardware, Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Northwoods Whitetails, your food plot headquarters. Plot Doctor and Harper Growing Solutions. Real Wood Productions, the log trough feeder. Scent Thief. Hunt Stand. And First Form Outdoors. Number three, uh, Dead End Trails. This one is very important. Um, probably might be number one. Um, most important, Dead End Trails, guys. Uh, I actually did a video when I uh, kind of did an inspection on a uh, doe bedding that I did back here on the farm two years ago. And uh, I went in and, and I actually found one of these. It was after leaf out when I did it and I did it and didn't even realize it even had I even done it. Another thing is, as you go in and you do these hinge cuts and what ends up happening is, um, what ends up happening is maybe something because you're opening the canopy, you get a high wind and it's more open and a tree falls down and creates this stuff that you didn't even intentionally create, you have to go back in and inspect this stuff and make sure that, you know, something isn't uh, blocking stuff off. So dead end trails, guys, equals predator traps. 
any time that you make what I, the biggest thing one is to me is the V's. V's are very inviting for deer to be bedded on the outside of those in the mouth of the V. And what happens is, is I'll just draw this out here for you guys because I'm gonna, we're going to talk about it right here. The V would be, is having a tree, um, a stump here in hinge cutting the top. So it's this way. And then having another one here, and then you hinge cut the top, and the tops adjoin. And now you have this V in here, right? This V, you'll find a lot of times is these beds are in here, just like that. Man, it's inviting for them. The problem with it is, guys, when predation comes in this, this bottom spot right here, it, hopefully these hinges are high enough that they can get out underneath them. If they're not, they drive them right into here, and all it takes is just about one second of getting checked up and the, them darn coyotes are on them. So if you do find yourself making one of these on accident, it takes 10 seconds to cure it, right? You go in there with a chainsaw and you lop them limbs off and you poke a hole in there. So it just, and it doesn't have to be just, a, you know, only a three, four foot trail, two foot trail, whatever the case is. Now, if they're bedded in here and this predation comes in, they've, they've got 360 degrees worth of out that they can get gone. So make sure that's something that you're watching. So over here, I just illustrated that, you know, your access down, this is the top one is wrong. The bottom one is right. Like we were doing up here, right? Uh, transition guys, major issue. Don't put your transition right into the food plots, right? Separate video, but other, other kind of different topic. Um, and putting your, your hinge cuts, like we talked here, guys, um, sorry for the illustration, like I said, but taking your hinge cuts and making this directly right off the food plot, but all of these tops are intentionally canopied um, and and also all, you know, there's V's everywhere. Luckily, you'll have some, you know, there's going to be some porch trails through the center, but the less of those V's you can have is the better. Now, uh, so touch on that real quick. Um, years ago, I really, really... I'm not the canopy guy in the bedding areas, but you're going to have that. And, and you will spend hours and hours and hours trying to not have canopy. So a little canopy, areas that don't have canopy, I'm a very directional hinge, hinge cutting guy. What I like to do is this right here, guys. I make sure that that line of travel is past the food source. I go in here and every 20, 20 yards off the food um, plot, I'm making these corridors, these red lines that are in here. So what you're making, guys, is you're making these cubicles right here, probably 20 yards by 20 yards, right? Um, you're making cubicles. So when they're in there, them deer have all they only have to take five, six jumps, and they're on one of those trails for the food plot, out the back, whatever, so they can get out if predation comes in. But instead of these Vs, I'm taking these trees, and I'm trying to directional hinge cut them away from, um, away from the uh, line of travel. And what it does, it puts a lot of focus on the transition. Now, you're going to get in these areas where not all these trees are going to be always lean that way. And that's where this comes in. You can have trees going opposite directions in here. Not a tornado effect, but you, you're going to have some that are leaning some which way. So, for example, guys, best thing to explain it is if you've got one out here, right, that's going to end up coming back in this way, and you've got one that's in here, if these are canopied on top of each other and there's a, there's ways for them to get out underneath, that's totally fine. Um, but I wouldn't intentionally make a bunch of canopy in the entire bedding. And here's, here's why. It's not the fact that the deer don't, don't like canopy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that a bunch of does will try to bury up underneath that stuff. Shade in the summer, they do like to be cool. They're no different than us, right, in the summer. But the problem with it is, is the, the tree, when you hinge cut, is meant to stay alive. And it's meant to rebud. It's meant to grow vegetation. And if you have too much canopy in there, what happens is it leaps out. And that area underneath of that has no, has no browse, no grass, no anything. So... We started the process by making removing canopy to let sunlight to the forest floor. Now we're going into hinge cutting, and we're putting a bunch of canopy in these do, in these doe bedding areas or these bedding areas in general, and we're choking off all of it. You go on the outside of it, there's grasses, forage and forages, and browse on the outside. You look underneath it, there's nothing. Right? Yes, they'll come out and get that, but it's if you have a little bit of that, that's fine. 
I wouldn't do, you know, 50% of it canopy and 50% of it not. If you've got 20, 30% of it canopy, then that's fine, you know, because like I said, you can spend a boatload of time and just the way the trees work, uh, they're not all, always going to do what you want them to do, right? First and foremost, like we said, guys, be safe. Uh, the cheapest investment you'll ever make is a hard, a hard hat. Steel makes them with them face protectors. Wear glasses, wear gloves, um, high vis shirts so everybody can see where everybody's at. Uh, I wear the chaps. I don't know how many cuts I've gotten those darn things. The more tired you get, um, you're you know letting the saw down. Um, just go above and beyond. Be safe this year. This stuff works, guys, but it's all for none. If you get hurt doing it, make sure we're going home. It's no different than wearing a safety harness in a stand, right? We all want to go home to our loved ones at the end of the day. Great, great tool to use. Not, uh, not the safest thing. It's very dangerous. Make sure you know what you're doing. And you, you can have great outcomes on, uh, you know, bedding and, and uh, habitat creations. Just be safe, guys. And take these three things into consideration. This year when you're out on your farms um, making bedding areas habitat pockets. Thanks guys.